The star of this movie has a particular set of skills. Skills that make him very entertaining to moviegoers everywhere. Even though he's basically just making the same movie again and again. I was lucky enough to score a pre-screening pass for Run All Night, our annual dose of Liam Neeson shooting people in the head. And in this movie, Liam Neeson is playing Jimmy Conlon, a retired hitman who is content to live out the rest of his life in the bottom of a bottle. Until one day when his estranged son, Mike, played by Joel Kinnaman, drives a couple of gangsters to the home of Danny McGuire, who happens to be the son of Sean McGuire, played by Ed Harris, who is Jimmy's former boss and best friend. And while they're having their little get-together, Danny goes crazy and kills the two gangsters, and when Mike inadvertently witnesses this, Danny goes after him and tries to silence him permanently. Naturally, Jimmy is not about to let these guys kill his son, so he kills Danny before Danny can kill Mike. This does not make Sean very happy, and he sends everything he has after Jimmy and Mike trying to wipe their bloodline off the face of the earth. When, oh when, are people going to learn to stop messing with Liam Neeson's family? It never ends well. They did an entire trilogy of movies explaining how it never ends well. Why does it keep happening? You'd think they would have learned. So yeah, this is not exactly treading any new ground here. It's a pretty standard Liam Neeson action thriller. Although, for what it's worth, I liked it well enough. It was perfectly serviceable. Did exactly what was advertised. I thought Liam Neeson and Ed Harris both did a great job as Jimmy and Sean, and they both play off each other very well. Neeson in particular does a very good job of illustrating just how much of a toll a life of killing people has taken on him, and how desperately he does not want his son to have to go through the same thing. In fact, he spends the entire movie doing his best to prevent Mike from killing anyone, even if it's perfectly justified, because just one kill could potentially send him down that dark path. As for Joel Kinnaman, who you may remember from the remake of RoboCop, I thought he was... okay, nothing spectacular, but okay. Vincent D'Onofrio has a small role as a detective who has been trying to nail Jimmy for years, but has never had enough evidence to convict him for any of the people he's killed, and I thought he did a decent job. Common has a small role in this movie as your typical indestructible hitman, not really much to say about him, good or bad. He doesn't have to do a whole lot except shoot people and look intimidating, and I guess he did that well enough. And Nick Nolte has a very small cameo, uncredited, as Jimmy's brother. I heard he was actually supposed to be in more of the movie, but except for one scene, everything he was in was cut. I don't know why you would want to cut scenes with Nick Nolte, but there it is. The movie was directed by How May Colette Sarah, who has previously worked with Neeson in Unknown and Nonstop. Obviously, he knows Neeson very well at this point and really knows how to play to his strengths. There are a lot of very fun action sequences and chase sequences throughout the movie, as well as a lot of big sweeping shots of New York City. Pretty much every inch of this city is covered in amazing detail. One thing I do want to say about this movie, I like how they answer the obvious question of, why don't these people just go to the police? You have an army of mobsters coming after you. Just call the cops. They actually answer that, because it turns out Ed Harris's character has a lot of the city's police in his back pocket. And in fact, there's a point where Mike does try to call the cops, and it does not end well. Attention to detail. Amazing. In the end, the movie isn't necessarily anything special, and certainly it's not going to win any awards, and I'm sure there will be an endless stream of people saying, I liked it better when it was called Taken, and... Yeah, so did I. But as far as Liam Neeson action movies go, it's perfectly serviceable and I enjoyed it. It's not necessarily worth seeing in theaters, but I can definitely recommend this one as a rental. And that's about all I have to say, so till next time, take care.